very warm welcome to Bharata First. You're watching the discourse with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Since you're here, I have a humble request. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon and share the content so that more people get to know about Bharata First. That's it. Nothing more. Well, we also have a YouTube membership program with some great perks. Do check it out under the join button and join now. And do contribute to keep our content alive. The link is in the description below. A small contribution that you make will go a long way in us bringing you this content. Once again, I would like to thank uh, all of you who have come forward and made those contributions. It means a lot. Well, moving on to the discussion now. The Digital Personal Data Protection Act of India sprinted through its final stages uh, earlier in August after several years of debates, postponements and negotiations culminating with its publication in the official gazette on August 11th, 2023. In just over a week, the bill passed the lower and upper houses of parliament and received presidential assent. The adoption of the uh, DPDP bill in the parliament comes six years after Justice K.S. Puttaswamy versus Union of India, a landmark case in which uh, the Supreme Court of India recognized a fundamental right to privacy in India, including informational privacy, within the right to life provision of India's constitution. Now, the law as enacted is uh, transformational. It has a broad scope of application, borrowing from the EU's general data protection regulation approach when defining personal data and extending coverage to all entities who process personal data regardless of size or private status. The law also uh, has significant extraterritorial application. In this edition of the discourse, we will analyze the Digital Personal Data Protection Act of India. Joining me on the program today are uh, Shubhimal Bhattacharji, cyber and data science expert and Kushpu Jain, advocate of the Supreme Court and data privacy expert. Thank you to both my guests for joining me on this edition of the discourse. Uh, Shubhimal, let me start the program with you first. You've done a lot of work really as far as uh, data protection and this is right up your alley, your domain. Uh, how would you look back at this act? Do you feel that it addresses at least most of the challenges? Because there has been a lot of criticism as far as the act itself, you know, several quarters saying that it is uh, infringing upon certain rights and others also talking about how it is only going to make things slightly worse. But is that how you look at it or uh, do you see, uh, you know, good things happening? Well, Frank, I think, you know, it's a great enabler I, I I see that the larger picture is uh, a great story that, uh, you know, we have been all waiting for this piece of legislation now, you know, the conversations around this has been happening for a decade, uh, although the process actually would have really started from 2017 after the uh, Justice Putuswami versus Union of India judgment on the privacy as a fundamental right. But even much before that, you know, how personal data protection was getting important, how you needed to look at it uh, as a separate, you know, piece of legislation, not only from a individual's rights protection, but also, you know, the amount of data processing that happens, the Indian uh, uh, service sector, the IT services, the BPOs, all of them, you know, a lot of them have really done very well, even without a, uh, specific legislation in terms of the service level agreements that they have signed with uh, the Fortune 500s and everywhere. So we uh, definitely we needed a law, and now that this piece of legislation has come after you know the two three iterations that have happened, I think you know we all uh, should be celebrating that because at the end of the day, an an individual is possibly today uh, in charge of his data. Of course, there's a lot of homework to be done. You know, a lot, lot of people are, you know, just not aware of their rights or, you know, how important is their data. So, you know, that, that of course, is something that will work be worked upon. But what is important to realize that, that today I have a piece of legislation that protects my data uh, and nothing can be taken away from me without my consent. So Absolutely. I would see that larger picture more than the, you know, the naysayers. Absolutely. I think that's the most important point. At the end of the day, we have something that looks at our data in particular, I think. But one of the biggest challenges is uh, 
making the populace or the public know why that data is important and how important that data really is because in today's day and uh, day and uh, age data seems to be the new gold and data is far more worth than gold itself uh, we have several massive big tech companies you know who are testament to that fact who have made crores and you know billions of dollars of money with just data mining and with our data kushmo i'd like to bring you in into the picture you know as far as uh, the citizen is concerned as far as uh, the rights of the citizens are concerned how does uh, this particular act deal with the rights of a citizens with regards to data see if you look into uh, uh, the whole act it practically talks about giving rights or it's made for for the users for the people and if i just talk about few uh, uh, they are See, till now we never had a thing about getting information about what kind of data are you processing we used to use the services but we never had an option to know that what are the services which are being used so now you have a right to obtain information about processing that what data of mine are you processing i also have a right as a user to seek correction that you know this data doesn't seem to be correct so you need to correct because it's a wrong data that you are doing it apart from this one very important aspect which was one of the essentials of right to privacy was right to be forgotten so you have something called as right to be erasure been provided in under this act the other one other one which we have which we till now did not not have it when it comes to data is that we can nominate uh, uh, another person to exercise the rights on your behalf in case there is an incapacity or unsoundness of you know mind or in the event of a death apart from all these things you have uh, 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 the aspect where the ownership of data is mine so i have to give an you have to take consent so without my consent you cannot process my data so till now what used to happen is we used to give just a blanket consent and never had an information about it but now companies are forced that there is no harm in collecting data they are not obstructing you to collect the data and process and you know those tech companies to exist but all they are saying is that there's a data principle that is you and me take permission from them give them very clear in you know detailed information as to what are you collecting and for what purpose are you collecting and after that where all places will you be using that data so all that information now i have that i i can have that information and i can exercise my right that whether i want to be part of that you know churning of uh, uh, my data to be utilized or i want to be a data subject or i don't want my data to continue until and unless it doesn't hinder into the kind of services i'm getting it's not directly linked to the services that i'm getting it so overall if you see uh, it is given a great right to the data principle that is users that's you and me where we have ownership to our data and we understand that what exactly is happening and then we exercise our right that we are okay in doing this uh, this in a way is good for companies as well because now that they know how to do it and you know there would be more uh, ethical uh, uh, if i may put it which should have been uh, you know right from the start so this will bring in that ethical aspect of you know data uh, uh, part of it and as you were rightly saying data plays a very important role now not just for businesses but also for national security and in the event of a cyber crime also data plays a very important role so looking at all these things i think it was high time that the that the uh, users have some ownership to the data and understanding about it absolutely let's let's uh, take the discussion forward so we will and talk about another aspect let me bring it in as well you know so uh, the uh, act basically has given exemptions to states so is this going to have any impact on privacy frank uh, i think you know there isn't something that uh, has been uh, done uh, uh, or i would say you know nothing unique has happened in terms of such uh, an exemption i think uh, it is very well laid out where are the exceptions and uh, whatever has been happening in this country you know right from the exclusion of fundamental rights to uh, say this piece of legislation and we have had the intermediary guidelines we have had the it act and all of them you know when does your fundamental right doesn't work or when you know a state can really process your data i think that principle has remained the same so the level of alertness around that i think is possibly a little bit uh, too much now what what are the states or the agencies you know uh, going to get that exemption for it is for security or national security sovereignty public order so you know these are similar principles on which exclusions have been given under article 192 of the 
constitution when it comes to you know fundamental rights so i don't see that uh, that's going to create any kind of an additional uh, whipping arm for the states and those entities i think uh, everyone would be very very conscious so the government is uh, very clear if it has brought a legislation to protect your data and why would it want to you know misuse uh, these provisions and all so i think for a start i think we are going too much into looking into that aspect that uh, states have got uh, too much power no i don't see anything like that i think over a period of time as we have seen if, if you compare uh, frank with the intermediary guidelines uh, regulations that that you know come in february 2021 implemented from may and the concerns that were there if you uh, look the work in the uh, last two years uh, i don't see you know there has been anything where there has been overreach or anything and all and uh, even in the twitter judgment uh, by the karnataka high court i think the government's uh, uh, power or more than the power the government's uh, capacity to a look at the sector uh, has been clearly uh, you know i would say approved but uh, nothing adverse has been uh, given around this so we should allow the situation to emerge there are enough checks and uh, balances uh, rather than you know creating an alarm right when a uh, you know regulation is uh, brought in absolutely so kushbu let me bring you into the picture once again you know um... are there any aspects that you feel uh, should have been addressed by the act itself uh, any challenges along the way and uh, anything that stands out for you see overall i i i like the i like the way it has come up it's mm. it's nice and uh, uh, you know uh, to the point that it's practically talking about privacy and rights you know and how do one enforce those rights the fundamental rights of the fundamental right of privacy of yours so i would say in a nutshell it turns out to be good you don't even need a lawyer to understand the aspects of the bill and that's the beauty but apart from that there are some points which we were contemplating from past 5 years which with with the aspect of data localization which we have completely gone away with here so that aspect i think should have been covered maybe not a complete localization but a you know a, a different level of local localization laws should have been implemented uh depending on the kind of data it is so that's 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 the area which i feel should have been addressed but nonetheless overall if you look into the bill the intent and how things have been covered it's very precise and clear it's not even getting into the aspect of security it's telling you we are not even segregating the data the 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 you know the information is an information uh, all information is important if it's personally identifiable and uh, the security standards looking into the kind of company you are and the kind of data that you churn category of it you have your own standards in place but in the event in the eventuality where there is a breach or or you know uh, 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 non obligations of certain uh, obligations which are of, which are put in a, in the for the data fiduciary there would be a penalty imposed so if you see it's a very very crisp uh, act if you you know in a nutshell if i have to put it but yes uh, the aspect of uh, uh, localization is something which i still have my reservations on okay okay the you know diverging points are coming through yeah go go ahead go ahead one more, sorry uh, one more point which you can add about is up to uh, 250 crore penalty is i think too less for the companies which are tech giants which are the biggest holders of the data so that would not practically act as a deterrent because i understand deterrent was the whole idea behind up to 250 crores and in certain areas 50 and certain areas up to 150 so i would say that should have been at least some percentage according to their global turnover which gdpr had in place or maybe we could have come up with something like that especially looking into those big tech giants which we have today absolutely now since we are here now you're talking about big tech giants we're talking about global companies who have run into a lot of trouble in um, you know markets around the world especially in europe and australia as well you know so we mal uh when you look at it and compare it from that perspective uh, <clears throat> um would you say that uh, our new law now uh, is on par with some of the so called uh, pioneers or champions uh, as far as uh, data privacy is concerned especially in australia and in europe or we have some way to go no i think how how, how do we compare with with the laws for say for instance in in europe no i think we do uh, very well in fact in many aspects uh, we do better than uh, uh europe 
but what what's important as kushu has also mentioned is you know what is the intent uh, behind the uh, laws and you know do they really protect me as an individual i think that's the fundamental question that comes and that's where i don't see there is a variation in any of the jurisdictions you know when they have come up with the provisions of the law maybe kushu and i would uh, differ on that figure of uh, 250 crores i would still think that for whatever purposes you know and uh, that has been uh, said you know for example say you know breach in observing uh, the obligation to give uh, to the data protection board or the or, or the data principal a notice of a personal breach a 250 crore i think is uh, quite good enough you know they cannot get away there is a level of uh, responsibility that uh, comes in uh, but by and large if you, if you look at what provisions have been uh, brought in to put the data fiduciaries in place to give the rights and uh, obligations of the uh, data principals and uh, you know to allow even the exemptions you know how uh, you do it i think it is good for example you know for startups uh, or other net, uh, you know notified categories of uh, data fiduciaries you know the exemption given i think is a very good step we are looking at uh, you know to build a trillion dollar digital economy by 2026 so you have to foster the uh, startup community so uh, with necessary checks and balances if you have done something like i think this is something that neither the gdpr or even the australian legislations have uh, given uh, so i would think that uh, we are not only at par at some places we are better off and even when we brought in the regulations for intermediary guidelines i think we sort of set a benchmark for other uh, countries also to look at and if you look after this legislation was passed already a few countries including south africa have said that they will act as a base for them to bring their own uh, data privacy regulations absolutely uh, kushbul let me bring you in uh, uh, once again and talk about another aspect let's uh, address that as well because it's been talked it's been spoken about for a really long time the right to be forgotten and uh, this has been a big part really as far as data privacy is concerned as well because everyone needs i mean if someone doesn't want to be remembered on 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 the digital platform then he has the right to be forgotten as well so should this right uh, be given in the explicit form i mean that's that's my question and how would you look at the whole issue of right to be forgotten see uh, it should not be an absolute because see if there's something linked directly one has to also look into the aspect that there are enterprises who are working and we cannot strangle them or strangulate them so there has to be a balance over there but uh, uh, i would say for children there should be a complete right to be forgotten as we have it in california law which talks clearly about that anything any data of children on social media or any other place on the internet the companies or data fiduciaries are obligated after 18 to exercise their right of right to be forgotten and the complete data has to be erased that's one good thing the second would be that if something is not directly linked to the services that you're providing me the services which i am taking and uh, the purpose of that gets over at that time i should have the right complete erasure as an option to do it because i do not want to be uh you know uh, i mean the ownership should still lie with me but but a lot will happen when it comes to you know enterprises putting this in reality or you know to bring this in the design in, in you know then the entire setup so that's where i think we have to see that how that gets implemented because i think enforcing that is is a difficult task uh, it it it's easier said than done but there are a lot of places where you me all of us would understand that there are things which have been done in the past there are things which were which are related and we don't want that to be associated you know with one click that should not come out or hamper your present so i think in those scenarios right to be forgotten should be or one of the fundamental right or should be exercised in a right manner and uh, uh, should also be implemented by data fiduciaries in some aspect so i think if it's not linked with the services i'm taking one if it's not hampering uh, uh, you know the entire uh, 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 situation that you are in with regard to services then i think one should have a right to be forgotten if it's directly linked to you with the sufficient cause so it should be it should be in a in a proper manner but how to implement that i think we are still to see that absolutely all right the time to get closing comments now from both my panelists for the best way forward and what next starting first with you should be well i think frank it's a great piece of legislation it, uh, you know was in the wait for a long time i think the um, 
rules and regulations for under which uh, the data fiduciaries will operate. They are very, very clear. They were necessary. And I think it gives an absolutely clear purpose for which uh, uh, you, know, you would want uh, them to perform. I think the rights of the data principles are well laid out. And then, of course, the system of penalties uh, that have been put uh, should uh, guide uh, many of these uh, large uh, entities that handle data to be careful and uh, you know follow the spirit of the legislation. Uh, Kushbu, close the show for us with your concluding remarks. Absolutely. So I would say that in the era where data powers innovation and drives businesses, uh, 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 drives growth, data privacy has emerged as one of the most critical concern for everybody in the world, including enterprises, individuals, and the government. But I think this legislation uh, uh, is in a way recognizing and, uh, you know, putting, putting a putting a stone to, you know, what you call it, exercising the right to privacy in a right manner for users like you and me to understand, for data fiduciaries to understand their obligations and how to perform that. And also bringing in certainty in India that this is what the legislation is all about. So, you know, the businesses doesn't get affected and the, and the, and the, and the uh, uh, companies abroad also don't feel any scare when it comes to investment or doing businesses in India when it comes to data protection. Absolutely. All right. We'll have to leave to that. Thank you so much uh, to both my guests for joining me on uh, this edition of the discourse and putting things into perspective for us. So what's coming out of this discussion is that the act is a great piece of legislation. It has a clear purpose and is easy to understand. There are enough checks and balances in place and no one really needs to fear anything. There is now a system of penalties and the tech giants will have to work within a set framework. They will now have to follow an ethical way of sourcing data. That having been said, the 250 crore penalty may not always be a deterrent for some of the big data mining behemoths. Enforcing the right to be forgotten may still be a challenge and there is still a lot of homework that needs to be done. Awareness among the masses. Now that continues to be the biggest challenge and how we address that going forward remains to be seen and that's what's going to be key well that's it in this edition of the discourse since you made it till here i would remind you to like the video subscribe hit the bell icon and share the content so that more people get to know about bharata first also check out the membership program under the join button there are some great perks there uh, do go through it and uh, please contribute to keep the content alive a small contribution that you make will go a long way in us bringing you this content the contribution link is in the description below. So please have a look at that. Well, until next time, this is Frank Rausen Pereira signing off.